This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first guest today is Jackie Krofcheck from the Alpena Chamber of Commerce. She is the president and CEO. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Nancy. And as, we, um, as we're taping this, you just finished with your annual Flog Fest, a really great event for our community, sold out as usual, great event. And a lot of people don't realize the amount of business that's done at the Flog Fest. <laughs> I think more business is done on the golf course every year than it is anywhere else. So there's a lot of business that's done, but there's also a whole lot of fun that happens. And speaking about a whole lot of fun that happens, the um, Grub Crawl, that's coming up. That always sells out, always a great event. I see pictures posted on Facebook and other social media. It's the event of the year. It is, and people look forward to it. We actually have people that plan their vacations around it, so um, either locals who can take vacation days to do it or people from other towns that plan their vacation to come here during that time. So it is September 15th. Uh, we did increase the number of tickets this year by 50, so oh, we're, okay. we're expecting to sell those out as well. Um, and the day that we announced that they were available, we had people already coming in to buy them. So it's definitely a popular event. Now, what's the date? It's September 15th. Okay. And it'll... Um, be from 5.30 until 10 o'clock. Okay. And if people aren't familiar with it, it's... Yeah, tell us about it. Yeah, so it's, it's called Alpinopoly. And so it's kind of a live um, version of Monopoly. So you get a board that looks like the Monopoly board. And there's um, 12 locations plus a bonus one this year. And you visit the different locations, so different restaurants and bars. You get a stamp at each one. There's food to try at each one. And then there are drink specials at each one. So if you fill your entire board by the end of the night, which is totally possible, then you can turn it in and win some great prizes. Awesome. Now, so transportation, how does that all work? Yes, I'm glad you asked because some people think, you know, I don't want to be drinking and driving to different right. locations. So um, there's three different vans or shuttles that shuttle people throughout the night. There's a, a regular route that each one follows. And then at the end of the night, if you don't want to or can't drive home, then you can um, take a taxi that's courtesy of Budweiser. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. And do so many fun and unique events at every venue you stop at. We do. So we have a, a game at each um, one. It might be trivia or it might be like we've had a blindfold game where you pin the straw on the, the daiquiri. Um, probably the, the favorite games, though, are the Minute to Win It games. So if you're familiar yeah. with that show, um, it's, it's a really funny, funny thing to watch. Okay. So where do we get our tickets and how much are they? They are $20 okay. um, f for early birds, so through the 8th of September. They'll be $20, and they're only available at the Chamber of Commerce, and then they go up to $25 after that. And you have to get them because it will sell out. It always does. Yes. People call every year you know, and say, are you sure we can't get any more? Are you sure? And we say, nope, this, this is the limit because our restaurants have to be prepared. Oh, sure. Um, so absolutely, if you want to go get your tickets early. And thank you to all the people, the bars and restaurants that participate in this event to make it so much fun. Because, you know, it's kind of a busy night for them. Don't know if they make a fortune or anything, but they're helping out and they're participating in a, in a downtown event, making it good for all of us. Yeah, and we encourage them to, you know, they might not make their money that night. Some definitely do. But we encourage them to do things to get these people to come back because these are people that they don't necessarily go to these establishments sometimes or often. And so it's their chance, the business's chance, to impress them and get them to come back. So we encourage them to give coupons or for the owners to talk to them. Um, and just have make sure it's a great experience. Okay, and you're having another USO show? Yes, our Red, White, Blue Review, which we had to um, kind of scrap the name USO okay. <laughs> for obvious reasons. So um, the Red, White, Blue Review okay. is later this fall, and it's actually a, a fundraiser event for all of our military support um, receptions that we host. And another fun event, do it every other year. Um, the year before, the same thing. Social media was filled with it. Everyone said how wonderful it was and can't wait to get their tickets. So what kind of help do you need with this event? Uh, well, we actually, so the way this event works, and you know because you were part of it before, but... Many years ago. Yes. <laughs> People, um, they sing the so of, you know, a song that you might be familiar with. They'll pick whatever they want to perform, and they dress like the actual artist who sings it. And they either really sing or they lip sync to it, which most of them this year are really singing. Wow. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a whole show of entertainment, songs, um, a couple of different acts, maybe a comedy routine. And then um, there's a dinner involved with it, but it's out at the CRTC in okay. one of the airplane hangars. Okay. And it's just, it's really just a lot of fun. 
Okay. And tickets aren't available probably yet, or are they? Or? No, they're not available yet, but they, okay. they should be within the next um, probably three weeks or so. So just keep watching the Chamber um, newsletter or the e-notes and yes. you know, find out what's going on. Yep, and then this year, because it is a fundraiser to support our military support events, um, this year we're doing something a little different. We are actually having um, military photos and kind of a tribute and a thank you Ooh. to those who are serving and who have served. And so we will have um, a nice PowerPoint for them and some nice presentations we'll be making. Oh, great. So keep watching and get your tickets. That's right. Okay, then there's another Good Morning Alpina coming up, and that's the Big United Way one. That's right. That is September 9th. Okay. And um, we do host a Good Morning Alpina event every other month. And so the next one is September. Um, it'll, it'll be at the Aplex again. It'll be um, all about the United Way and the good things that the agencies that are involved with United Way do the good things they do for our community. And you know, Jackie, I, I'm talking about business that gets done. Um, when I was at Good Morning Alpina at the Brown Trout Festival, I talked to three or four people that gave me some ideas about some things that I followed up on that I would not have run into them had it not been for Good Morning Alpina. And it's going to be the same way for the next Good Morning Alpina. You know, come on down, $9 for breakfast, get a great breakfast, meet with all the people in your community who are the movers and the shakers and the business people. Come on down. Um, good chance to meet some people if you're new in town and join us and find out about all the wonderful things the United Way does in our community. Absolutely, and I think we get so caught up in our own routines every day of, you know, you have all this stuff to go do at your office, then you kind of get stuck in this routine. Um, I think the Good Morning Alpine events are a great way to kind of break you out of that and allow you to talk with people yes. that might not be part of your everyday routine. Yes. And so you're right, it does create a lot of new um, relationships and um, avenues, I think, for people. Yeah. And today, as we're taping this, it's 90 degrees, and I hate to talk about the Christmas parade, but it's coming up. It is. It's kind of hard to think about. We did just talk about it at our last ambassador meeting, kind of talked about what our entry might look like this year, and I know it's not until November, but um, people do start planning, and it, it is time to start thinking about it. So for more information on that, they can contact the chamber. You'd be able to tell them the dates and times and you know what the rules and regulations and all that good stuff is. That's right, and it will be a night parade again this year, yes. so we do encourage people to decorate their floats with lights. Okay. Um, people love it, and then we hope that someone can make it snow, the big fluffy snowflakes that night. Okay, and if anyone, um, as I said, I love getting the e-notes. I read it today on my way here and found, just before I came here, and found out lots of stuff that I didn't know was going on, found some new people who had joined the Chamber of Commerce in our community, so someone would like to get e-notes, how do they do that? They can just call us okay. or email any one of us and ask if they can be signed up for it. You don't have to be a member. Okay. If you are a member, the entire organization can receive it. So uh, we will add anyone to that list. It's really a great tool to know what's going on at the chamber. So then call 354-4181. You always remember that number. I I'm do. always so impressed by that. Thank <laughs> you. Good to see you, Jackie, and look forward to hearing about all the wonderful success at our chamber. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll be right back with Kat Tomaszewski from Besser Museum following these messages. Welcome back. My last guest today is Kat Tomaszewski, and she is from Besser Museum. Hi, Kat. Good morning. When you first got here, you were telling me how you were racing from one thing to the next. You didn't know exactly what you were going to talk about, so while you were waiting to get started, you went on your website, and you thought, oh, my goodness, I have too much to talk about. Absolutely. So we really want people to understand how great of a resource our website is, and it's bessermuseum.org. Okay. And right on our homepage, we have all of our upcoming exhibits, our upcoming programs, anything that's new or exciting at the museum and then those pages lead you you know throughout our website talking about our exhibits and everything you need is right there perfect so it's user friendly it's mobile friendly it works on all platforms yay and you had an event yesterday yes so yesterday we opened our new art exhibit called double vision okay and so it features last year's juried art winner so our first place winner and our second place winner first place being mark Bynes second place being Stephanie left from boys okay and they are so talented and what I love about the two of them is Mark has been doing art his whole life he has a master's degree in art he's worked in the industry he has work displayed all over the world Wow and he has retired up here in Alpena and he does a lot with the museum and his exhibit is phenomenal and then Stephanie is so unique because she her whole life never did a lot of art she took a class, an adult education class, loved it, knew she was talented at it, and has just worked on it. And so now the two of them are doing this exhibit together. 
And what medium are we going to see? So we have everything from traditional paintings okay. to charcoal and pencil, so it's, um, but very realistic, okay. very realistic. And they're so talented. We've had a lot of fun the past week putting up the exhibit with them. <laughs> oh, I bet. And so two local people, two yes. great exhibits, and how long will it run? It will run until almost the last week of October, okay. the 22nd. So we've got some time to come in and see it. Yes. Okay, and next? And then next, uh, August 11th, okay. from 6 to 7, Ben and Chelsea Klein are coming in. Oh, yes. And they're going to teach a class. It's a series of classes, and we call it our Kids Education Garden. So we have a Pioneer Garden Education Garden in our backyard. And it's to really teach kids that you don't need a lot of space or a lot of knowledge to joy, like grow a garden and to cook with what you grow in your garden. Yay! So the end goal is in September to have a fundraiser, a spaghetti fundraiser with everything that they've grown in the garden all summer being what we use to cook the meal. And so Ben and Chelsea have been in a lot and it's been really interesting learning from them. So the one coming up on the 11th, which is a Thursday, okay. is called What Kind of Bug Is That? So it's talking about the bugs that grow in gardens, the weeds that are in the gardens, what you do with them, what benefits some of them have to the garden, and what some of them are not good for gardens, and how to handle that. So it's really oh, hands-on for the whole family. Okay. And is there a cost for that? Yes. Okay. So we, it's $5 for adults, Okay. $3 for kids and seniors, All right. and then five and under are free. Okay. And another benefit is museum members are always free to special events like this. Yay. So it really adds up quickly to become a member. It's $40 for a family to become a member. You have free admission to the museum all year, all of our special classes and events. So it becomes a really good benefit. It sure does. Okay, next on your agenda. All right, so the newest thing is we are developing our classroom in the basement. Okay. So it's always been a kid's education room, and it's always been a hands-on room, and we're turning it into a self-guided hands-on education room for kids. So the families can come to the museum, they can do the tour, and then down in the basement, kids have a hands-on place to apply what they're learning in the exhibit. Oh, wonderful. And so we are painting. We have a girl coming in today. She's going to meet me about painting a mural. And just we're looking for some people who love working with kids to okay. volunteer and help us out in there. Okay. Ideas, retired teachers, um, anyone who loves working with kids and teaching and having fun. That's what it's all about. The museum, you would think it's a dull, boring environment, and it never is. It's exciting, it's fun, it's upbeat, it's education. <laughs> now, you had mentioned earlier that you were looking for teachers. Is this the project you're looking for them for? Yes, to okay. help in the, with the classroom, help put in place some programs and some guides to make going through the museum a little more interactive for all age groups, Okay. from yeah. 2 to 102. So what's the best way for them to reach you then? They can reach us at the museum. Okay. So 356-2202. Okay. And just ask for Kat. Okay. And then they will talk to me and hopefully we can come up with some, some great ideas. Okay. And our final thing that I want to talk okay. to you about is we have a challenge grant right now. So okay. we're in the final leg of our capital campaign. Yes. The planetarium is closed for renovations. It's completely torn apart. Wow. It's so empty in there. And so we have a one-on-one -on -one match right now for our last $100,000. So every dollar people give is turned into $2. That's amazing. So it's a very, very generous grant that we've been given. And so it's our last push, and we're looking for some help from the community. The planetarium was initially built by the community. And one more time, we're asking for their support to upgrade it to this IMAX-style cinema and have the capability to do everything from art to history to science to geology geography space anatomy everything can be done in there and it's going to bring so many people to our community because yes. there's not another one really close by like this and it'll be able to um, be use it for classroom teaching in the classroom yes. doctors and um, people in the community will be able to um, ass assess some of the the facilities, wonderful projects and things that can be done there. It's just, and we don't even know everything that can be done and it's just overwhelming already. Exactly, we have unlimited possibilities working with the college and the high school oh, and other yes. schools in the area. We're the only full dome planetarium in Northern Michigan. So that gives us the opportunity to work with people in the community, outside of the community, 
and which brings people in. Oh yes, it certainly does. And so we need donations and please every dollar you turn in turns into two. So give us twenty dollars, it turns into forty. Yes. Real easy to donate. You can um, donate from the website. Yes you can. So go to the website or go drop off a donation and say, Hey, I'm dropping off this donation and I want you to know that you know it's really important to me that this planetarium get built in our community and if you're a business, a church group or a civic group and you haven't done anything yet, please three five six um, two two oh two give them a call and just find out how you can donate or what you can do to help. Yes. And the museum hours this time of year are? We are open seven days a week, okay. year round. So Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. And then Sundays, 12 to 4. Okay, and we haven't mentioned anything like the fossil garden, like all the exhibits that surround the museum outside, um, all the wonderful things that are happening there. You need to actually go there, check everything out and see it. Bring your family a wonderful family place to go any day of the week. It is. Thank you so much, Kat. Look forward to talking to you next month. Thank you. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster, I'm president of Alpena Community College, and I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning Jim Makowski, CEO of the Northern Michigan Unmanned Aerial Systems Consortium. Welcome, Jim. Glad to be here, Don. Jim, you had a milestone event uh, here recently. Tell the viewers about it. Uh, my pleasure. The, um, the consortium, the uh, NMUASC, or Northern Michigan Unmanned Aerial System Consortium, has been a project that was started first by the county of Alpena uh, a number of years ago, and it was their uh, dream. And uh, 21st of July was, the, uh, uh, was a, an important milestone for that dream, and that was our first flight um, on, in the drone program. So we flew uh, under the watchful eye of the folks from New York at New Air at the Griffiths test site, one of the six uh, FAA-designated test sites. We are a test range for them. We fly under their authority granted to them by the FAA. So there was a lot of moving parts that came together in this, a lot of uh, work uh, kind of consummated in a single flight day um, a couple of weeks ago. So we are uh, we're just excited. The milestone is more important than the actual flight itself. Uh, what it did for us is, uh, in that process, uh, the uh, NMUASC is now authorized, we are certified to fly um, anybody under the FAA rules uh, on the test site. So if somebody wants to go at high altitudes or large uh, uh, unmanned aerial system platform <clears throat> or go long distances or other special considerations, we can do that now. And uh, this is something that can't just be done uh, under routine circumstances. You can't take a, uh, we can do things that hobbyists and even people in the commercial environment cannot do. And we can do it right here in Northern Michigan and that is you know, due to that first flight and all the work that led up to that. So. Very, and, and there was a tremendous amount of work. There uh, was. And um, um, maybe you could flesh out that last point for viewers. Uh, uh, why, uh, what the assets are that Alpina has that makes drone um, flight um, um, something that, that that's advantageous for our region, something worth developing that's not just a pie in the sky notion. Sure, absolutely. Anytime, anytime you're trying to uh, develop a business structure, you try to figure out what can we do better than anybody else. And, and so we do an assessment of the resources or characteristics of this area that uh, enable us or would be attractive to uh, companies developing or testing drones to come to northern Michigan. And they are numerable, um, starting with a relatively low population density. Uh, that is uh, a very large factor, great airspace, <clears throat> and uh, the, the presence of the uh, airspace complex that was previously or that has already been established by the military, we can, we can uh, take advantage of some of those things. The fact that we have over water environment 
uh, the fact that we have uh, manufacturing capacity. We have a college that is in close partnership with us and as you well know has uh, assets that are uh, beneficial to those who could come here sure. and uh, train or develop or, or test whether it is the um, mobile command and control vehicle, whether it is the platforms, um, or whether it is the educational capability that the college has. You put all these things together and you have a substantial and powerful incentive for people to come and test here and hopefully, ultimately, establish a permanent presence here in either testing or manufacturing that will result in jobs and yes. um, development of this area. That is our goal. That is why NMUASC is here and that's why they're a 501c3 and that's our what we're working towards. Well Jim I think you've done an outstanding job of uh, work leading the organization through all those myriad details um, and, um, and, and it consummating in this first flight and explaining the significance of uh, this flight. Uh, tell us a little bit about the flight itself, the vehicle. It was, uh, it was a very interesting uh, uh, device. It is unique in the sense that it's a um, pretty much a commercial drone completely inside a cage which allows them to actually move the drone across the floor, up a wall, or fly through free air, or, or go into places where normal drones would not be able to go, and certainly where people would not want to go, uh, whether it is inspecting an um, electrical uh, tower at uh, some altitude, or going into a confined space and moving around, or being able to go into, in response to a law enforcement uh, activity or military activity, and go uh, with its cameras and sensors and be able to um, uh, gather data. Yes. And uh, so it was, uh, it was kind of uh, helpful. And also, uh, for the novice or two that got a chance to fly that, it was uh, uh, low risk because when they crashed it, it bounced off the floor, <laughs> not, uh, not damaging the platform. Yeah. So those are some of the advantages. It was, it was unique in that respect. Very much so. And, uh, and we see at the college uh, applications for drones coming down the, you know, on the horizon, um, coming down the pipeline, however we want to put it. Uh, utilities are very much, a, um, that's, that's real life where instead of sending somebody up, up a pole to uh, eye a transformer, potentially get hurt, you could send a drone up. Absolutely. It, it will certainly increase efficiency. It will certainly increase safety factors so you're not putting people at risk. And with the <clears throat> relatively rapid changes the FAA is making in their policy, it opens the door for a lot of commercial applications that pretty, pretty much were previously closed. And uh, so there's a, a lot of opportunity uh, for businesses and a lot of opportunity for those who are developing those drones for those businesses and colleges that are developing training programs for those who are going to operate those drones. Yes, we see that too. What's next for the NMUASC? <clears throat> well, we are. Um, we have just signed on a uh, somebody to help with business development locally, um, and we are just beating the bushes looking for people who are interested in taking advantage of what we have to offer to help them test and develop their platforms. And we're looking at very large names and very obscure names of companies, and, but we are uh, taking everybody, um, everybody that we can. And we're working in close partnership with the, uh, our uh, folks over in New Air in New York, <clears throat> they are an important uh, element of our success as well. So, we're, well, we're, uh, thank you very much for your efforts, your leadership, and, and bringing this first flight to fruition. We look forward to, to uh, many more good things. Um, thank you for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you again next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your hosts, Nancy Smitham and Don McMaster. For a list of events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on the community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production. The Talk of the Town Furniture and Set Design are provided by Young Appliance Art Van Furniture on US 23 South in Alpena.